Pat Merrick with Totally Local VC and KADY TV. We're at the Ag Summit here in Camarillo today at the barn. Um, really, an all day summit about local farming and how it helps our community and how we can expand that out to t send the message. And I'm standing here with Nancy from Sunflowers on the Square. She donated cookies today for the event, and, and I have to say, it's probably some of the best cookies I've ever had in my life. Thank you so much for. for coming out and be a part of it. Hey, Kat, I really appreciate the opportunity and enjoy being here. I haven't been to the Camarillo Ranch, so this is a first for me, and I love it, and thank you for including me. Oh, it's a first for me, too. Isn't it beautiful? It's absolutely, and what a great day yeah. in Ventura County. It was County. <laughs> really windy yesterday, so we were a little nervous, but it, it turned out, and I kept saying, it'll be beautiful, it'll be beautiful, and it is. So everyone's going to get to enjoy some great cookies today, so thank you very much again. My pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Thanks. We're at the Ag Summit, the 2012 Ag Summit today, here in beautiful Camarillo at the barn. Uh, it's a great great day talking about local farming and and how we all kind of promote it to our community and teach them and what better person to do that with than Tim our <laughs> chef Tim he's doing the lunch here today and uh, Tim is from Sidecar Restaurant Local Cafe and the executive chef now at the Mupu Grill and thanks Tim for everything yeah, you've been of doing course. thank you <laughs> it's it's nice to be part of it. Yeah, and Tim Tim has always been known for the fact that he sources local. Um, when you go in his restaurant, um, almost everything on his menu he's gotten locally. So he's got a strong connection to the farmers in the community. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah. I mean, it's it makes it makes sense. We're in the middle of all of it, and there isn't a reason why we shouldn't go right up the street and pick up strawberries or lemons That's or you know, things like that. It's it's all around us. And who are some of the farmers that you work with? Um, we work with Petty Ranch, McGrath Farms, uh, Underwood Farms, uh, Rio Gozo, um, Dave Palmer, Tamai Farms. There's, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot. ton, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. We really do have a bounty, and everyone's going to get to enjoy a great lunch today pre prepared by Chef Tim, so <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. I'm standing here with John Chris, who has been a huge, huge part of planning all of this. And John is with the, and I'm going to say it right this time, the Farm Bureau of Ventura County. And and really, John, how lucky are we? Uh, well, I mean, I, I've been into every state in the country, and I always come back here, and I'm happy when I get here. I mean, this is just such a great, uh, great place to live and a great place to do business. It really is. And, and the turnout today, I mean, oh. it's a pretty eclectic group. It's an excellent group. I mean, when I, when I looked out, um, you know, standing up there, as I said, I saw a lot of familiar faces, but there's a lot of unfamiliar faces. And that's what this is all about, getting a lot more people involved in this exactly. conversation about, you know, the future of agriculture in the county, which yeah. is a conversation about the future of the county. It really is. It really is. I love what Chris Sayre said, too. It, it is, it's branding us mm -hmm. because when people get endeared to their food and they understand where it comes from, they understand the source and they understand what's right here. Right. Right. It's, it's an easy thing to understand. I mean, we have, what, we're one in five in the in the region, right, uh, that in the world of regions that have uh, the Mediterranean climate so we can grow five right. crops a year? Well, I mean, you look around this county, you don't see land sitting empty. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's, true. it's for one thing, it's too expensive, too valuable to let it uh, not be earning its keep. But also, you can grow crops yeah. year-round here. I mean, you know, how amazing is it that on, on New Year's Day, most of the country's shoveling snow, we're picking fresh strawberries. In, in short sleeve <laughs> shirts. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing, amazing place. It is, and also yeah. the diversity that we have, because you, you hit a point, I was listening to you run down the crops, mm -hmm. and the fact that we've <clears> got <throat> celery... Right. Raspberries and raspberries is the unusual one yeah. because doesn't it usually an alpine region that they grow it? And well, there's been a actually we grow a lot of blueberries too, which yes. you know originally they they're they're Canadian, exactly. you know, and northeastern U.S. But we've over over the years there've been new varieties developed that can uh, you know do well in our climate, and our growers have experimented and figured out how to do it here. Yes. And that's, that's one of the amazing things because of the natural attributes that we have here, the climate, the soil, the water, uh, our growers can experiment with lots of different things. I mean, you know, we, avocados, they're, they're, they're tropical, you know, they're native yes, to true. Central American hillside jungles. And, and we, we, we grow them here in this rather drier environment. Oh, you see them in everyone's backyard. That's absolutely, amazing to me absolutely. is how many old trees you see. My neighbor uh, has one. Yeah, but yeah. I think the, the big thing is is when the general public is to say that, I mean, we're, we have to understand when we go to our farmer's market, that is a bounty that you can't find it anywhere else in the world, I don't think, like we yeah. have right here in our own in our own community. Yeah. So it's pretty here. Well, I think one of the things that's, that's really, it's, it's not unique about Ventura County, but it's definitely one of the qualities that sets us apart. There's this hunger. People want to know who grew their food, how was it grown. Ventura County farming is still it's small scale for the most part, and it's these are families. Exactly. You know, 
these these are multi generational families. Exactly. You know, you look families at the people around my board of directors. We're talking fourth, fifth generation, and so yeah. there is a person to get to know, and it's your neighbor, and they send their kids to the same school as your kids. Well, and their stories are so wonderful. Yeah. When you, when like you just said, there's third, fourth, fifth generation farming families, and when you sit down and you talk to them and you start learning their history, or an easy thing, go visit the Ag Museum oh. in Santa Paula. Yeah. And that to me was amazing, the, how many years it took them and they got it there and the equipment they have and the story that they're mm -hmm. telling. So it really is huge and thank you, John. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, it's pleasure. a wonderful day and I'm, the turnout's fantastic. Oh, it's, it's terrific. We're very happy. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you and I'm here today with Henry Gonzalez and Henry is with the Agricultural Commissioner for Ventura County. And I mean, really, the, the amount of knowledge you have about what's going on here today at the Ag Summit is I was so excited to hear you get to hear you speak. So thank you for coming out and what a great day, huh? And actually, I am the agricultural commissioner for you Ventura are. County. You are. Uh, it is a beautiful day. We're so happy, so pleased for the turnout and also the beautiful weather that cooperated. Uh, we're much pleased with everything today. It's great. It was pretty windy yesterday. We were a little nervous yesterday. We heard the wind coming through the rafters there on the barn, but we got a fantastic day. And what a bunch of great speakers we have today, too, that came out, huh? It's really fabulous to have this level of speakers. This could be a university course uh, exactly. easily. Uh, and to have the audience come here from uh, L.A. and other areas, Santa Barbara County, it's really great because they can hear about agriculture in this forum where they wouldn't hear about it otherwise. Well, and the diversity of what they're getting to hear. They're not only hearing about what's grown locally, the impact farmers are having. They're hearing the health, health, you know, the health de department talking about what's going on with our food, too. And I love one of the questions that we're going to probably hear more about later is schools, what's going on in our schools. So yep. I was really excited that we're going to get to hear about that as well. Yes, the, uh, the variety of speakers is reflective of the Ag Futures Alliance uh, organization and how we want to bring in diverse opinions so that we can develop better answers. Yes. And it's wonderful because this is a community that always has been pretty strong at working together and it just seems like it's growing and getting stronger and stronger and as we said again I'll use the word diverse a great diverse group coming together to make sure that people understand how important ag is for us. This worked first in Ventura because Ventura is Ventura and the people are how we are, exactly. wonderful people. In other counties, this actually hasn't worked. They've not been able to band together to develop an Ag Futures Alliance and to develop the answers to questions that really need to have, that, again, the diverse opinions in there. And so it, it is a, a testament to Ventura County and the people of Ventura County. It is. Open heart and open mind and understanding that it's all of us together that can make this happen. So maybe it'll start first with all of us. I think so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a group of wonderful people that have come out for this event. I'm with Dave Fawcett, and Dave is with Mission Produce. Now, Mission Produce supplies a great deal, not just to our community, right, but worldwide. Yes, we actually, we are the uh, second largest uh, avocado packer shipper in the world. Um, California is one of our major uh, growing regions of avocados. Uh, we've been in the business since 1983, and I've had the, the proud duties of being there for the last 14 years. Wow. Yeah, I started out in sales for about nine years and then made it into the uh, sales and category manager status now. And, That's uh, fantastic. We, uh, we're here today, you know, to help represent with some of our growers that are here, uh, trying to help represent uh, the avocado community and uh, trying to give back as a whole. You know, and it's a great thing because we were talking about that, that California has really built a really strong reputation for some of the best avocados in the world. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of our customers, uh, retail, food service, and even the wholesale community, the big locally grown, um, it's a big campaign that's really spread the last three or four years. So, you know, we have uh, different customers, Costco, Trader Joe's, Ralph's, uh, so many different ones that they like to advertise locally grown and, you know, with all the good growers here in California, we like to help support that. That's fantastic. Thank you, Dave. Thanks so much for coming out. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. It's a fantastic day of farmers, community, everyone coming together for discussion on how important and how vital our agricultural community is to us. And I'm here today with Carmen Ramirez. She's on the Oxnard City Council, and it's so wonderful to have you here and have City coming out and supporting these things. Well, thank you very much. Agriculture is very important to our city and our county. and. Um, 
keeps us alive. Well, Oxnard and it's beautiful. is. Yeah, Oxnard's got a lot of agriculture yes. going on over there. And it's it's wonderful, the conversations today. They're so diverse, aren't they? Yes. It, it, everything from health to the schools to small farmer to large. To the economy, mm -hmm. what we need from our agricultural producers. But I think what was really interesting to me was, and it's staying with me, is the disconnect that some people have about where our food comes exactly. from. It doesn't come from the store originally. <laughs> And we have to support the people producing exactly. this amazing stuff that has created human civilization. Exactly. And otherwise, we'd still be in caves looking for that mammoth. Well, we have a totally local VCR organization have worked hard. We said we want to make uh, farmers the rock stars because that's who they are. Because without them, you don't have a healthy food source. And we've really, without them, we don't have any food. But we really need to highlight that and get people kind of unbrainwash them from the old ways of eating right. and actually that's wrong too. get back to the original way of eating original where way you knew who was growing way. your food in the healthy that's right way. and a couple of weeks ago I was in Los Angeles at a conference with people from all over the country we had a lot of locally produced food at our luncheon and people were just overwhelmed with how fresh beautiful Yes. healthy tasty it was mm -hmm. I realize a lot of us take it for granted who live here I think some of us do and I love the best thing I heard was uh, John uh, Fontaine from Rio Goza Farms we were in his field with a chef and a winemaker tasting for a dinner we were doing and he said to the chef he said I don't mean to offend you chef but when it comes out of the earth this wonderful it's kind of hard to mess it up so not that hard but we we're blessed we have a bounty from the yeah. county and we have a great community and and people like you that sit on council for Oxnard and our other cities that have come out and they support it as well and they understand it. Right. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Kat Merrick with Totally Local VC and KADY TV and we're at the 2012 Ag Summit today and I'm standing here with Glenda Humison. Humiston, did I mm -hmm. say it right? Yes. I was hoping I was going to get it right. Now I get to do the long one. The USDA Rural Development Commissioner. State director. State director. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's thank you for coming down. My and, pleasure. Uh, what a fantastic day, huh? Oh yeah, and it's a great event. You got some just fantastic people gathered together here. It's you know, and that's what I was really impressed with and I'm I'm so excited about is the diversity of mm -hmm. the people in the room. Um, we have state, local, county, um, city, health department, um, and all our farmers from small to large. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal, isn't it? It is, it is. And and so what are, what was one of the highlights so far this morning that you feel that you've heard them talk about? Well, actually, it was fantastic having Paula Daniels up here from Los Angeles Food Policy Council because yes. one of the key messages I'm giving in my presentation later today is the need to build these bridges between the urban and the rural, exactly. the value chain opportunities in between the farm and the consumer's fork, and the fact that, frankly, we need to get the business community and economic development uh, segment more deeply engaged in this activity. Exactly, because you know, um, states like Iowa work actively on that. Act through their universities, they have a program. They do. I was just reading about it last. They do, night. and they don't even have a fraction of the opportunity we actually have here in California. I was thinking that. I, a friend of mine pointed it out, so I was reading it last night, and I went, "We we have this bounty mm -hmm. that blows them away. Five growing seasons." And well, and, 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 and so, look at yeah. it. We grow the food we're supposed to eat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's California's big advantage it and really something is. that we've got to start exploiting for both jobs and economic development. Way too much of the food we grow in this state does not get processed and packaged and handled in this state. Exactly. It doesn't even wow. get to the citizens of this state. Exactly, and the thing that people don't understand too is 60% of the organic uh, farming is grown in California. Mm -hmm. So you've got 60% of organic produce grown in California and and it doesn't end up in a lot of our schools it doesn't end up in a lot of our stores mm -hmm. and that's something I think we really do need to work on it well not only that but uh, a report released last June from the California Centers for Excellence showed that a, an, a strategy to develop these ag value chain jobs could produce over 181,000 jobs within the next five years and those jobs would be averaging almost $24 an hour the, these are head of household good paying yeah. jobs, the kind of jobs we need to do to get the whole economy moving. Exactly. Those people are going to turn around and buy houses and cars and VCRs if we can get them. And, and it takes advantage of our beautiful yeah. natural resources here. Well, what I think it is too is a lot of times I tell people we need to support small business and we need to support mm -hmm. local business. 
farming is local business. Farming is local business. And when we can connect all of the dots together between farm, schools, uh, restaurants, and, and our stores, Absolutely. it's all business. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank Great. you for coming out Thank today. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Good luck you. with everything. Thank you doing. so much. Summit. Talking about agriculture, our community, and how it affects all of us. And I'm here today with James McGee, and he's from the Red Cross. And he was just explaining to me how wonderful it is that how the Red Cross kind of plays into this food source conversation as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's not a direct connection, but if you think about what ag means to this community, um, in a community of 850,000 residents, we learned today that 31,000 support this industry, and our role as American Red Cross is to make sure that we're here when disaster strikes. And at some point, a regional catastrophe will take place, and we need to make sure we're there with our community. That's partnering with businesses, partnering with industry, and making sure residents understand the importance of preparedness. Well, and that's part of it, too. God forbid if something happens, the food source is going to be key in how we feed our people as well. So. Absolutely. When we think about preparedness, we also need to think about recovery because it's not a question of if, it's really a question of when. We live in a high We're risk region. Try not region. to scare everybody at home. By no, it's not a scare tactic, but again, <laughs> I think there's a lot more we can do around preparedness and more importantly, um, recovery. If businesses are prepared, if these growers are prepared, they're going to be able to get back to work more quickly. Well, and something that was really key that I heard was uh, the fact that California basically could, I mean, or, or just Ventura County alone could feed the state of California if it had to. And I heard this report and thought, wow, if something was to happen, we're able to take care of our own. Uh, that's pretty amazing. It is amazing. I think what's also amazing about this forum today is the diversity. Mm -hmm. um, you not only have industry, but you have government agencies and key influencers that represent a number of different okay. agencies. And whether you're trying to solve the food problem or you're trying to come together and make sure our community is prepared, it really requires that collaboration. That's what's so powerful about an event like this. Oh, it's fantastic. Yes, it's a wonderful event and we're going to have more. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Hi, Kat Merrick with Totally Local VC and KADY TV today. And we're out here at the Ag Summit, and I'm with Linda Parks, and she's the Ventura County Supervisor, or one of the County Ventura yes. Supervisors. And what a wonderful day, huh? It's a, it is a beautiful day for Ventura County, but to get this great mix of people, I'm really yes. happy to see that, all supporting our agricultural industry, which is it's like over one and a half billion dollar industry here in exactly. Ventura County. And that's been the thing that everybody has commented on, is um, the diversity of the people that are here supporting this today in the conversation. Everybody from big business to small to health to our small farmers, it's fantastic. And, and it really needs to come together. We need to incorporate local food in everything we do and try to do everything we can from our schools to having local food to our farmers markets to getting our stores to incorporate it. It's good for our business. It's good for our health. Exactly. Well, thank you so right. much. And we're going to have another great day. We've got some more great speakers coming up after lunch. And I can't wait to hear what some of the other ones have to say. It's been great, great so far. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you so you. much. Bye. Hi, and we're back at the Ag 2012 Ag Summit, and I'm standing here with Dr. Robert Levin, and he's the Ventura County Health Pub from, sorry, Vin Hi, and we're back, and I'm standing here with Dr. Robert Levin, and Dr. Levin is from the Ventura County Public Health, and he just finished speaking, and it was wonderful, some of the questions and some of the, the stuff that you were talking about, about how, obviously, health affects people's lives, and eating healthy affects their lives, but also food source. Mm -hmm. So want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you felt were the key factors that you talked about, the key points. Well, something that I think is a key factor, I didn't necessarily go into as much as I, I, I would have liked to in 10 minutes, yeah. but I think changing the built environment in which we live has everything to do with our ability to change the way we think and more importantly act about eating appropriately and moving around, being active appropriately. In other words, think about when I was a kid, we had corner grocery stores. So if it was 15 minutes before dinner and we were out of milk, get me some milk. And I'd hop on my bicycle and I'd pedal off four blocks or five blocks, get some milk, come back with it. Now, to get anything, you got to get into your, your car and drive there. Just the world has changed so much. There are places where there are no sidewalks and where there are sidewalks, there are places with no parkways, space, uh, green spaces between the sidewalks and the streets. So it's not a walkers friendly world that we live in. I just came back from a weekend in San Francisco. One of the main streets there um, in the Mission District, they decided to put in a bike lane. And 
it's unbelievable. There are, I, I counted just because I have a public health orientation. I, I did a little survey. It was in the middle of the afternoon. On any given block along this pathway, there were an average of seven bicycles at any and every moment. They, they were really being used. That's good. And it has a huge impact on how we look yeah. and our health. Well, I also think that uh, with the new trend, which is eating local, and, and if we can continue to grow this trend, people mm -hmm. are going to start getting it. And then it opens up that whole demand for more mm -hmm. and, and for more local. And, right. and, and getting our restaurants, our stores to understand that, that it's a huge branding opportunity to mm -hmm. say, I've got local, and it's here, and it's right. fresh, and we just grew it. Right. So if we can continue to do that, and it's right. conversations like what we're having today that are yeah. going to make it happen. That's true. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I look forward to more. You're you're welcome. Hi, and we're back, and I'm standing here with Claude Mann. Man? Man is fine. Man from Edible Ojai Magazine, which is a fantastic magazine, and you're actually Ojai, but you have magazines like this all over the nation. Um, I picked up, I think, my first one when I was in Austin, Texas, and came home and went, why don't we have one? And someone said, we do. You, we, exactly. <laughs> you, the odds are that you have an Edible Magazine yes. if you live somewhere in the country now. We've got magazines the first the flagship magazine was in Ohio and it's edible Ohio in Ventura County is ours yes. uh, but uh, now there's probably 8 million readers and 70 magazines around the country and the whole concept of the magazine is just connecting consumers with the people that grow and produce their foods well it's fantastic because now I have a stack of them okay. and it's wonderful because you look at it and it doesn't only just um, talk about local. He, you even have writers like Ria Goza Farms, John Fontaine and Elizabeth have been writing articles mm -hmm. which have been wonderful. Recipes, um, you, you give in season what's happening and so it's, it's really key for anybody that has any kind of interest into what's going on in our community. I think it's wonderful to pick up a magazine like yours and know that they make it, you make it easy for them to understand. Yeah and, it's, and, and part of the deal what you said about having John and Elizabeth is that we love to get Phil McGrath that's here. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of people they're involved in Ventura County agriculture or food or cooking will write for us and it's yeah. it's interesting to hear stories written by the farmer by the chef somebody from inside exactly now I yeah. heard a little rumor that uh, Phil McGrath might be featured in your next month's issue there yes a there's rumor? there's a it's there's it's a rumor and it's based in truth <laughs> he told yeah. me so it's our ten, it's our, our ten year anniversary yeah. and so for for our ten year anniversary we're taking 10 uh, farmers oh, and profiling 10 farmers throughout the county. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah. There's so many to choose from. That must have been a hard choice. It is. <laughs> and they're the new superstars, though. They are. I keep it's, saying that. We yeah. keep trying to make them rock stars, and that's what they are, you know. Especially guys like John Fontaine or Phil McGrath walk in a room or Chris Sayre, people know who they are mm -hmm. because they've done a fantastic job of marketing how important local and in-season is. And then it's with the help of, of magazines like yours. Thank so. you. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you, Claude. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kat Merrick with Totally Local VC and KADY TV, and we're at the 2012 Ag Summit here in beautiful Camarillo. And I'm standing here with former mayor and city councilman Christy Weir for Ventura, and uh, it's been a great day, huh? It's been fabulous. So many new ideas. Oh. Speakers from the federal government, mm -hmm. from the state government, from local, it's its just the amount of information is amazing. It is pretty amazing and, and you look at um, what they're talking about and they're really talking about not only our ag but how we support it as an entire community, mm -hmm. which is great. One thing that Ventura mm -hmm. has really mm -hmm. gotten behind. I just want to say for Totally Local VC, Ventura, the city of Ventura was the first one to really step up and believe in our program, what we're doing, and really kind of get it that mm -hmm. we all have to as a community mm -hmm. embrace everything agriculture music arts yep. everything that's yep. going on yep. so yep. it's been fantastic and we really have so much don't we we do well and, and here today the emphasis on the local food and being able to promote jobs with that I mean one of the interesting things I heard here was the fact that in the state of California the biggest 
economic engine for jobs is going to be agriculture. Exactly. And we don't often think about that. The fact that it's it's not just for our personal little preference <laughs> of having local food, but there are lots of jobs to be generated here if we all kind of work together and support each other. Yes, that was huge. And, and how exactly what you said, working together and supporting that. And the fact that she was rattling off those numbers that were just absolutely astonishing of yeah. how much money yeah. and yeah. the state of California and city by city. And then when you break it down, what Ventura has in Ventura County mm -hmm. in agriculture, that's a lot of jobs that could come our way mm -hmm. and really sustainable jobs. Absolutely. And and in the rural urban, what she was talking about there with the rural urban mix too was we think of farm jobs as being on the farm always exactly. and, and, and sometimes low paying. But in agriculture, you have all these levels of jobs and half of the jobs that are relating to agriculture are actually in the cities through banking and, mm -hmm. and you know, um, infrastructure. There's just, it, it's, it's a huge mind boggling potential that we have here. Well, I'm looking forward to taking away all of this and, and all of us getting out there and really kind of spreading the word after yeah. this because yeah. there were some really great speakers and, and so much mm -hmm. information and in such a variety. So mm -hmm. I think it's going mm -hmm. it to really help us all walk away and then come back together again to try to make it happen. Yep, absolutely. And thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Christy. Thank you. And we're back, and I'm standing here with Kim Albright from Whole Foods. She's been instrumental on the committee helping us pull this Ag Summit together, all of us working together on it. And Whole Foods has been a huge supporter of this. I mean, I know you're a huge supporter of local and the new, even the newer program you have, which is really, really promoting how much local we have. But this Ag Summit really came together with a lot of your help. So I want to say thank you up front on that one. You're welcome. It's huge. So Whole Foods, tell us now, You, we were talking today a little bit about, you know, we're hearing about all of this working together community. You guys have a lot of programs that actually are helping uh, the business, the ag businesses too, correct? We do. We have um, a local loan program that farmers and vendors can apply for. Um, I also think it's really the community connection that we mm -hmm. have. So we have five local foragers. We have one forager who's specifically working with farmers um, and all of us work together to bridge um, the need. A farmer can call us up and say, I have excess amount of this produce, can you use it? Exactly. And then we can bring it in in a day turnaround and sell it and tell a story. That's fantastic. And then um, they were talking today, one of the panel members was talking about how you, um, when you guys merchandise your your produce, let's say your produce, that it's in season that's forward and local that's forward right. and that it's constantly changed, Right. which I thought was cute. He said apple sat at the front row for a couple of months, so you knew that was what was in season that month. And people are, they have to, we have to reprogram them a little bit right. to this. So. Right. Right, so we do have that. We also work on telling the story of the farmer with a photo of the farmer. We also now have some, we have local blogs that are online and we're also doing local videos. Oh, very good. So we have a Kinter Canyon um, local video that people can see online and looking at their farm and talking nice. about how they got started. So really talking about telling that story in more than just one way. So more than just a sign, yeah. but also online and via video. And that's what we keep talking about too. Another thing that's been a key point today is how we keep getting the general public. You know, there's there's some of us that have always kind of been in tune with farmers market or eating local or the farm. Right. But the general public kind of getting them educated on why eat local and how to do it and how easy it is. So things like videos and, and what you're doing will really help. Right. And then I think also at the store level is tying in recipes. So we also work on tying in recipes with local produce of what's going on yeah. so people can think oh uh, here's an apple what else can I do with it other than slice it and eat it or like we experienced today for lunch kale yes, yes. kale we yes. had the best salad I've ever had in my life and it was kale okay how many people actually are eating kale lately <laughs> that kale rocked a lot a lot <laughs> a we, lot now we actually sell well, a lot of kale I hear it's the new superfood yes. so everybody's eating yes. it now but for a lot of people that aren't used to it to saute it up with those mushrooms mm -hmm. it was it was fantastic it was fantastic yeah. wasn't it yes. and and um just like you said, the apples, the blueberries, the ra right. there's so much. And we're lucky. We're spoiled, us Californians, because we get so much. So. We are really <laughs> lucky spoiled. because there's so much growing here year-round. Yeah. Um, 
and so much fresh that yes we're exactly. really exactly we are i think we forget i mean I we, think do. we do yeah, we forget we take it for granted mm -hmm. you know it's like having the view and then one day someone goes you have a great view and, you know yeah. i walk through the farmer's market every saturday and sometimes even when i don't need anything just because they're m a lot of my friends right. now right. They say hey what's going on on the farm and you get to know them you feel connected and 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 that's wonderful that you're doing that in your store so that people come in and they can understand their food source right. and where it's coming right. from we also have local vendor days so we'll have days where we have five or ten farmers, local farmers, in our store oh, at a great. certain time where people can come and meet them. And then just their passion, too. So someone's like, oh, how do I cook this? And the farmer knows. Da, 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 da. And you really get it yeah. when you're talking to a farmer exactly. about that. That's yes. true. They yes. really, really understand it. Well, thank you again. You're and welcome. the breakfast and all the help. And, and, I mean, your team just showed up and poured out, and it was fantastic. It was really fun, and it, it was, was a great way to connect, too. It really so, was, yeah. Huh? yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>